The larger example is one of my favorite and most difficult cases I ever mediated. It was when I was working for an environmental mediation firm that I described earlier. A small, primarily Mexican community in Denver had a school in their neighborhood. And there was nearby an offload chemical transfer point where big tanker railroad cars came in and offloaded toxic chemicals into trucks to be transported all around the western United States. And in making one of those offloads, a chemical company from, ironically, Mobile, Alabama, had created a toxic spill into the atmosphere. And there was a huge cloud of toxic chemicals hanging over Denver, and particularly over this neighborhood. And the school's response and the police response was classic in terms of its denigration of that community that was surrounded on all sides by heavy, hard industry. They immediately closed down the school and sent the kids home without thinking, oh, this is the middle of the day. The parents, if they're working, they're not home. The kids have no home to go to. And they were putting them right outside into the air. And the parents are seeing this on television because it was a big deal. And the police go around to tell everybody to leave the neighborhood, come outside and go out through the toxic chemical. And, and, and they don't speak English, and so they're just banging on the door and saying, vamos. So there is a very strong community organization in that community, and they sued. So you can imagine the emotional impact that they were carrying in that mediation, coming into that conflict. We spent a lot of time hearing the story, getting the depth of the anger of this community group. So in the first session, the, we had very carefully prepared the plaintiffs to tell the story, and they did. We had them talk about how it impacted on them and how it felt to them to be treated that way by this accident, the impact it had on them. And that part went really well. The chemical company folks received it very well. They responded to our coaching to be open and receptive and listen. And they said, we will take this back to the CEO and we'll come back for the next session with our response. So a couple of weeks later we have the second session and in they come and a lovely Alabama, Birmingham woman was the vice president who was the representative there. And so she stood up and she said, you know, nothing like this could conceivably happen in my neighborhood. I live in a very nice suburb of Birmingham. There's not any kind of industrial anything anywhere around me. It couldn't conceivably happen. So it is very difficult for me to imagine what the impact is on you. And she said, and I've listened to what happened with you. And it's just inconceivable to me to go through what you've gone through. And I've thought about how we can respond. And I know that usually in lawsuits, in a situation like this, there's a negotiation. We say we'll pay so much to buy this park and fix it up. And you come back and offer demand more, and we negotiate back and forth. And she said, I know that's the traditional way to do it. And I felt myself going cold inside because I didn't know she was going to do this. But she said, I just think if I do that, that will be incredibly disrespectful to you. 
I want to tell you, and this is going to make my lawyers go nuts, because I haven't told them that I'm going to do this. I'm going to tell you the entire amount of money that I have authority to offer. And she told the number, and it was three times more than what the plaintiffs had been hoping for. But I knew human nature. So as soon as she told the number, I interrupted. I reflected back her beautiful process. And then I said, let's take a break. And sure enough, the plaintiffs were not believing her <laughs> that she didn't have more money there. <laughs> so we had to have quite a conversation, my co-mediator and I, and working, you know, what did it feel like? Do you really, after all the time you spent with her, don't you get that that's really the truth? And finally, indeed, they did come to that place because that would have just ruined the apology. It would have just blown it out. So apology can have a miraculous effect, but planning for it, training people for it, supporting them through the process are essential.